Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I mean, we're shooting this on the, uh, the 10th day of November, in the year 2000, and I don't know where people are watching this show. We know it's on the internet. We know it goes out all over the world, but everybody must know that there's lunacy happening with the American presidential race. Nobody knows who's president. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. Everybody's suing everybody. And the interesting thing is, what people are spinning, you can just, if you change the positions, the p same people would spin it exactly the opposite way. So, in essence, where is the truth to this? No matter what ends up happening, who's president, where is the truth? Where is our integrity? And, you know, for people who've watched the show, this is the 107th show we've done. We started five or six years ago. And all over on the opening and everything, we talk about dedicated to the oneness, to that experience of that connectedness between us all. And when are we going to have that? No matter what turbulence, no matter what insanity happens with presidential races, when are we going to come into that experience of that true integrity, that true love? Will we understand the relationship between all things, which is all from the same source? So in essence, we are all brothers and sisters, however you would describe it. There is one love, there is one God, and there is one experience, and it's for us to have. And all the, all the guests, when we were looking today, we were updating the website, and we were looking at, we've had you know, probably over 200 guests now, and every one, although somehow they could look different and look like they're coming from different spokes of that wheel, in essence, they're really all talking about the experience of that love, of that oneness, in all their different forms, in all their different ways. And that's what the Bridging Heaven and Earth show is about. And once again tonight, we have people who are flying in from New Jersey. We tape in California, basically just to do the show and to share their experience of that connectedness, of that love, how their lives brought them to that experience. We have Ariel and Shia Kane, they're spiritual teachers, they're worldwide workshop leaders, they're uh, authors of an extraordinary d new book, uh, Working on Yourself Doesn't Work, which is, you know, we'll get into that. And it's a book about instantaneous transformations. Now, you could say, how do you instantaneously trans transform? And is there work involved? And if you, don't, if you can't work on yourself, how does it work? But it's an interesting story, and it's, it's a clear path into that experience of living in the moment. And we have somebody else, as we normally do, who, who shares that experience in a different way, who shares it through her music and her words and her vibration. Uh, Kate Bennett is with us tonight. Uh, she's a gifted singer-songwriter, and she's going to be singing some really wonderful songs. I mean, we all just really blissed out during the sound check earlier today. From her, uh, She's going to be singing songs from her new CD, Over the Moon. So, again... It's an opportunity for us all, Republican, Democrat, black, white, young, old, to come together, for, at least for this next hour, and to go deeper into that experience of that one true love, that one essence, that one God. So please join me as we normally do to settle in to a short meditation, and then we'll start with Kate doing a song, and then we're going to have Ariel and Shia with us. So please join me. Hi, everybody. So, yes, yeah, settle in. It's a, it's a chance for us all to share more of that love. So, we're going to start tonight's show with Kate Bennett uh, doing Wolf Song. This was, song was written by Kate and Kenny Loggins, and it's going to be performed by Kate Bennett. And this is off her CD, Over the Moon. So, Kate.
Thank you, Kate. That was fantastic. So we're on the set with Ariel and Shia. Hi, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so how hard did you guys have to work to realize you don't have to work anymore? Uh, very, very hard. <laughs> we did more work than I hope anybody else ever has to. Yeah, why don't you tell us an interesting story? Why don't you start out talking about how you went through all these experiences and you lived in, a, in an but ashram or a monastery. But why don't you talk about your story? We lived I guess in you a, didn't have the same story. Yeah, no, no. We, well, we started, we met whilst we were searching. Uh -huh. Shia was actually teaching courses on time management and different kind of seminars. We were taking every seminar we could get. We did all the things like walking on fire. We did meditations. We did, we ended up going to a meditation uh, center in Europe and spent there a couple of years working very diligently course after course. And the last uh, course that we took there was six months long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was enough. 24 is that what you do with tech support or something? Well, <laughs> actually, we did dream meditations, you know, the kind of thing where they'd wake you up at night and say, are you dreaming? Then you'd write them down and then really grumpy. Everybody was really, really grumpy. Yeah. I mean, try going for a couple of weeks without ever getting a single night's sleep uninterrupted. It's like being having an entire house or meditation what, what, center. What center was it? Um, it's not there anymore. It ended up. It, I don't even know. It, 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 ever it had died name. after that. You <laughs> know, no could, after that. You why why can you follow six months right. with? Holy yeah. shit! Uh, so we um, we we left there quite disillusioned with the whole idea of working on ourselves anymore. Uh -huh. And an amazing thing happened. Uh, we were in San Francisco. We went back to the states, and we we were in San Francisco because that was in Italy, and we. Uh, uh, we were walking down the street one day and I realized that I was no longer going to try to fix myself, that I was really Didn't okay. Did you recognize it exactly the same moment? No. no, I told him he can't say that. People would get upset with us. <laughs> That's right. That's what happened. But he stopped uh, working on me around about the same time and something See, I stopped working on me and I didn't need to... It's a real she didn't, key to she didn't have to, she Right. She didn't <laughs> have to look good. For me to, she didn't, because you see, since we're married, she represents me in the world. And so is she, that how you see it? No. I think oh. that's how, how I did. Oh, I was say, you're starting to scare me now. <laughs> no, but I think a lot of people but, think but, that. You know, it's like, don't, don't do that. You know, uh -huh. you know, like, you know, you're supposed to be smarter than that. You shouldn't say things like that. And well, that could be true anyhow. We're married or unmarried, right? This is true. <laughs> but when you're in a relationship with someone, you pick on them the same way you pick on yourself. And when you stop picking on yourself, you don't pick on them either. And then magic really happens because a person can grow into who they are, not who we think they ought to be. And, uh, you know, even with yourself, you can grow into who you are rather than who you think you ought to be. Because we've all been taught how to be. You know, we grew up in a culture. Our approach is very anthropological. You know, it's about looking at what is, not about what we would prefer, you know? I mean, every time you say the word, I said it, we, we had lunch together or, you know, we had tea after everything you say that. I think if we have to deal with monkeys and leaky or lake oh, anthropologists. Anthropologist. Oh, 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 yeah, but now oh, there are oh. cultural anthropologists that go into, right. you know, businesses. We go into businesses and, and look at the culture from a non-judgmental standpoint, and it's amazing how quickly things can shift. Now, you can do that because you're going into a culture that you're not really part of and that you have no, you know, big bite either way. Now, how do right. we do that in our own lives where we have all the, and that's a lot of what your tools You start teach. with the little things. You start with yourself. We talk about awareness a lot. Awareness in our definition is a non-judgmental seeing of what is. And that's really tough mainly because we often see things and then we have preferences. Oh, I wish it wasn't so. But the and, and you also have cultural things that say what's good and what's bad and what's right and what's wrong and what's beautiful, what's aesthetic, what's spiritual. And then you try to live up to those ideas or ideals or standards that you were given. And what you end up with then is really working on yourself because you're not that. You're not the standards of the society you grew up in. You're an individual. You're unique. You know, there's six billion of us unique individuals that seem to be human beings. And you can't apply yeah, it's a standards. Dubious concept sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it is. <laughs> it looks dubious so, so you can't really apply standards that you grew up with because this world is changing so fast. You know, a hundred years ago, most communities were small and insulated. Now you've got the internet, 
Uh, now we can get on a plane this morning and be here today. And you're going to Costa Rica tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's right. So there's, yeah, there can be a lot of movement. A yeah, lot we of talked that about the internet. It's almost like in the 60s there were drugs to like transcend time and space. And right. now on the internet, in a way, there's no time and space. And you, you know, there's no religion, there's no anything. In, in the sense of... But, but you see, as human beings, we're still living out of the standards that have been passed down through history, and it's only in the last 50 or 60 years that there's been this incredible uh, revolution, if you will, in humanity in what's possible. You know, 50 years ago, very few women worked. They, they took care of the home. Mm -hmm. the, so our, 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 our cultural uh, pull or, or, or the tide or the drift of the culture is that women have a secondary place and that's no longer the case and but but it's built in i remember driving with my father when i was a kid and he would see people drive that drove slow and he'd say oh women drivers because he had this whole my father still does i'm sure <laughs> they're probably contemporaries right. <laughs> except my father's 94 years old and he's still driving my father's 87 his, his cadillac in what, in, what, in what florida location did he live in? No, he, he lives in he lives in far rockway new york really? still that's still, where you grew up yes yep. and he goes into the city five days a week and works and he runs the triathlete I, no, he, he's got a new girlfriend though. <laughs> she, she's she's 35. 35. Get out of there. No. Oh, I have good genes. He was telling me about her today. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see this here. <laughs> we're we going to have, we're yet. doing, a, we don't normally do videos outside, but we're going to do this one. So we <laughs> get the camera crew ready. We're going to New Jersey. <laughs> Bar, we're going to Far uh, Rock. Rock yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so you had this epiphany and you said, be quiet. So, how did you go from there? Well, he didn't talk, he, Shai's always been very smart. If, when I've gotten nervous about a subject, like when he said, ah, on our first date, you're the one for me in this lifetime. And I said, okay. And then the next day I was like, oh my God, what did I say, okay? Uh, I called him up and told him, do not speak about that. And he said, okay, I won't speak about it. And so he became quiet about it and just began living. And something in me relaxed. We didn't really know what we wanted to do next because we'd given up our careers to go on this search. And we moved back to New York and people who'd known This is from India or? No, we'd been uh, in Italy actually. Italy. And we moved back to New York and people who'd known us who'd been on the search treadmill with us ran into us on the street and said. I mean, you were doing like regular nine to five business type activities before you went off on, the, on this quest in a way. In a way, Ari Ariel was an actress and she was working quite a bit in New York and I had a, a practice in healing where I uh, discovered that if I could trick people into the moment, their pain would disappear. I mean, it would just disappear. Right. And so I had an orthopedic surgeon sending me people he could do nothing with and I 90% cure rate, like their pain wow. just disappeared. And that's what our workshops have become about. That's what the work that we do is about, is about getting people into the moment. See, transformation happens when you get into the moment, not as an idea, but as a being. A living a, reality. A, a direct experience of each moment rather than a concept of living in the moment. And then every act that you do, everything you do is spiritual. It isn't like you have to meditate anymore. Right. You, know, you know, because meditation is doing something to get somewhere, but you're well, already Well, no, I mean, here. it could be that you like the experience. I mean, you eat, you walk. I mean, you know, meditation, it depends okay. on how you approach okay. a lot. I take For it you, back. that's accurate. But I'm not sure that a lot of people approach meditation that way. Uh, well, they don't start out approaching uh, uh, it that way, but they right. go to your workshop. I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, they do, they, I mean, there are tools to get you so you don't need tools. In that's a true. Sense. Yes, in a sense. yes. And you see, if you... But here's the thing, if your premise, your ground of being, the place you're coming from is that there's something wrong with you that needs to be fixed, you can never fix yourself enough to be okay. Yeah, it's like squeezing a balloon, there's always there somewhere else. That, that's right, it just moves. <laughs> Very good, I like that. So, yeah. so We've done this show before. This show? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you and I, have right. all done this show before. Yeah. Okay, so and that's what the book's about, basically. Right. right. It's book? not about that... that you shouldn't do work. It's about the effortlessness of transformation. You know what we say, I mean, what I've said for a long time is you have to make so much effort that you realize that there's no effort you can make. But that's, it's a tricky thing. It's there's, like in the duality, how do you walk the razor's edge? Yeah, but there's no effort you can make that's enough. 
to get you here, but you're already here, so it doesn't take any effort. But you, but you have to recognize that. That's true. <laughs> you know That's why I mean? people... <laughs> I mean, see, you know what I mean? I mean, if you so, hadn't done that, you made all that effort. Well, you know, I read a book, and that's when I actually realized that I had already found myself. It was a book by, uh, about uh, a Zen master named Bankai. And he was supposed to be the most enlightened of the Zen masters. And he sat on a hard rock for 20 years and almost died, uh, meditating, trying to... That's how the expression between a rock and a hard rock is. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, See, we finally figured it out. <laughs> right. And... Uh, so he finally got enlightened, and what he realized after he was enlightened that that sitting on that rock was irrelevant. Once you get, once you become aware of yourself as, as here, then everything you did to get here doesn't matter. It doesn't take work. It, and it does. It's a paradox. No, I know. It's an interesting thing. It, it's a paradox because you see, there there's no work involved, and yet it takes a diligence, a willingness to look at your life from a non-judgmental point of view. And that's difficult for most of us. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes a lot of work to be able to do that. Yeah, well, so. well, you have but to, we're using work as courage. a... It takes courage. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're using words. I mean, you know, yes. that's always the problem with... You know, it's like if we said love, I mean, you could define it. We, and work, you could define... I mean, I usually say play work. You know, okay. play slash work. And, you know, what does that mean? You know, just, you know... I mean, whenever you use a word, that's the, it's the nature of... And, and then what we want is that vibrational love behind it. And I'm sure that's what's coming through in your workshops, without, whatever words you're using. You know, that vibration of freedom, that vibration of being in the moment. Well, it's about being, you see. It's not about doing being. There are a lot of people around who are trying to get somewhere or appear as though they've arrived or do being in the moment. You can't do being. You can be. You know, there are three states. There's a state of doing, which... Most of us are very good at. Yeah, busyness. Busyness, yep. exactly. There's a state of having, which is acquiring, acquiring. and then there's being. And we don't have many and being teachers. being doesn't mean that you can't acquire and you can't be busy. Absolutely. Because, right. you know, like people think if you become enlightened, you become uh, apathetic, you know, or complacent. You won't fish anymore. <laughs> Well, no, I know he's a big Now, fish, wait so. a second. No, I'm, now no, we're talking no, I was myself. Kidding. No, I know, but I'm not. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so, so here's the oh, thing. Oh, we're going to get trolled because I'm always kidding. So. Yeah, but that's okay, but I'm not. Because, you know, when we were at this meditation center, right. there I stopped fishing. Right. You know why? Because I used there to go down. Was a there was a great about. lake, and I go down to the lake to fish, and every time I came back, all these people were talking to me about love and being this. Uh, they him. hated me because I was like a barbarian for fishing and hurting these poor little fishies, which I never caught anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that was the joke. I never caught a fish in that lake. I understand. So, but, but my even going, even though it was like a meditation for me, was looked upon with great disdain. Yeah, concepts are brutal. Yeah, concepts of the right way to be, and we all have them. Because, you know, s some people have concepts of the right food to eat. You know, and if you eat the wrong food, you're a barbarian. So you can't do it right for people. You can't even do it right for yourself, but I'll tell you, when you start living your life for you, so that you feel good about what you're up to, life takes off. You start getting in touch with your heart's truth, rather than trying to get the approval of other people's minds. You talk about oneness, and you talk about the love vibration, and it occurs to me that it's another way of speaking about what we're talking about when we say awareness because yeah, what, exactly if awareness right. is a non-judgmental seeing in the judgment you're you're placing something in either the good category or the bad category and it's not that people with awareness will not have judgments you do have them but you can suspend them so that you're not operating through them and we've all been programmed we all have prejudices and if you recognize them rather than try and pretend you don't have them anymore then you can still include them but operate with each person as an individual as opposed to through the prejudice or the uh, opposition to the prejudice because a lot of us you know we're trying really hard not to be like our parents which makes us just like our parents in the opposite instead of having all possibility for life we're only stuck with not that and it's very limiting and with non-judgmental seeing what it is everything kind of relaxes and life gets a lot easier and then you don't have to work on things. You're not, you naturally you're not evolve. going around defending everything. That's I mean, true. You know, you're not 
you're just there. Yeah. You know, you're like love in motion in a way. That's the way. Love you know, in I, motion. <laughs> you know, rather than just conceptually framework that you know you identify. Now we all know what it says on our driver's license. We probably all know whether we were brought up in a certain religion or a certain. We know what color we are as a po You know, lighter right. skin than dark. But I mean, it depends how deep that attachment or recognition goes. Do you know what I mean? If 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 the ninety eight percent of us is in that recognition of our experience of, of the totality of it all and the oneness, you know, the experience of the infinite and all that we're all from that one. Instead of all the you know, like black shirt versus green shirt or whatever. You know, we could have wars over that. I mean we talk about that all the time. Mm. I mean people well, have holy know, wars that are about the, this far apart in the, religion. The, the, yes. <laughs> that <laughs> the need to be right robs people of their aliveness. See, righteously right, right about what you believe to be true, as opposed to somebody else has got to be wrong if you are right, rather than seeing, and, and you know, this, it's costly. It co to be right costs you love, costs you health, costs you happiness, full self-expression, relationship, partnership, spontaneity. That's what it costs to be right. Because, you know, when you're right... And right doesn't give you much. Cause oh, oh, yes, it does. You, yeah, you get something by being right. You get to be right. <laughs> but interestingly That's enough, that doesn't even last that long because even even the people who are right end up going through changes and that's not exactly right the next time. But I, it's the, the feeling of being right or the, the push to be right. You know, like it's like you have two apartments or two houses that you live in and you have to pay rent. To live in the right house, you have to pay rent. To live in the alive house, you have to pay for rent. The rent in the alive house is you have to give up being right. If you give up being right, you get love, health, happiness, etc. That's one of the things. We have to give up, you know, different... I mean, what else would you have to give up? Nothing. Being? You can have everything. All it takes is giving up being right. Now, if you want to give up aliveness, you get to be right. That's, that's the trade-off. It's one or the other. When you're being right about something, anything in your life, when you've taken a preference, your preference over others, that's the realm of change. And what if you're identifying... If, See, if you're identifying with that which isn't the fullness, whether you you're right, you won't think pain. of yourself as right or wrong. I mean, so, th I mean, there's, you know, you're using a certain, you're cutting a piece of the infinite out and saying right versus, but there's more in that the, framework. There is more, but Alan, when you are right, you lose the possibility, when you are being right, not correct. I don't mean correct. Not I mean, accurate. Not, not as in accurate. I mean right. You know how people are right about their point yeah, of view yeah. when they get into a no, fight? No, they're the holy they, wars about That's right. That's yeah. where your holy wars come from. Right. But and what, that's why people, we talked about this last week, strap bombs to themselves. To be, that's dead that's, right. That is dead right. Yeah, yes. that's your dead right. Dead right. And, and you take other people with you, make yeah, them dead right. Dead right, too. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of rights going on. Yeah, and, you know, like, um, see... There's a lot of talk about transformation, but most people get transformation and change mixed up. Why There's, don't you give your definition? Well, you can be okay. right. <laughs> okay, we'll do our best. I'll try. All right, let her do it. Let's do it. Okay, you and I are probably both right. Let her do it. <laughs> well, change is linear. It goes from one to the next. It's measurable. It happens in time. It's incremental. It includes dichotomy. There's right, wrong, good, bad. Transformation is exponential. So it happens everywhere at once and it goes forward and past in time. It doesn't happen in time. It happens outside of time. It happens in an instant. That's why it's instantaneous transformation. Transformation only happens when you get into the moment. You can't think yourself into it. It happens when your, your, your past and your future come together now. So change is uh, reasonable. It's, it's psychologically based. It has a cause and effects. There's a why. And with transformation, it's a happening. It happens. It is. There's a part of the isness. It's inclusive of everything rather than exclusive of things. So and, and it, it includes in, change. Yeah, it, it kind of happens in retrospect. When you go back to work and that pile of stuff at your desk, you just go through the resistance to doing it has disappeared somehow. It happens to you. Transformation happens to you. Change you do to yourself. And that's why change never works. Because people who are trying to fix themselves have an idea of what a better them would look like. And that is based in the cultural standards which we grew up in. So, so anything that you think you're going to be better for 
comes from what you already know. And if your life is going to transform, it's going to happen out of what you don't know, not what you know. The problem with knowledge, people have done a lot of workshops, done a lot of, read a lot of books on self-help. That information forms an idea of how things are. And so when we're talking about this, they say, oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, they have a context for it. I know that. I heard that already. Right. And they miss the essence of something that's coming that's not quite what they heard. See, our minds are quick. They finish our sentences. So you think you know where my, the end of the sentence is going before I get there. But I might go somewhere else. Sometimes I think that's why people responded so well to the Forrest Gump movie. It's kind of like the Forrest Gump School of Enlightenment. He was just kind of being there, and, and his being there and not trying to be smart had him be naturally brilliant. Not trying to prove or get approval. He was just being himself. Well, that's a lot about what our book is about, about being yourself, about Becoming Forrest Gump. No, it's a joke. But, but in a sense, no, I, in that simpleness, not We're the simple We're Forrest Gump tenderness. wannabes. Yeah, no, I understand, in a sense. No, I know like what you mean. Oh. chocolates. <laughs> All right, I think maybe what we'll do now is have uh, Kate's second song. It's called Buddha. Uh, it was written and performed by Kate, and it's, it's also on her uh, CD, Over the Moon. So, Kate, this is Buddha by Kate Bennett. Thank you, Kate. That was great. So where do these concepts live? I mean, the way certain philosophies or different methods teach that they operate in the head. You know, the, the mind is active. The mind has these concepts. So how do we take the mind that has the past and the future 
and bring it into the moment. Oh, that's question. such a good question. It is a good question. Like well, your first question was like, where is it at? I, I think it's more like the quiet part of you, your intuition. For you, like you were saying, meditation is something you enjoy, and that may be a way to listen more to that quiet part of yourself, the one that's not forceful and, and says all those recordings, you know, the, the ones that tell you how Bad good, you are. good you are, but in a negative way. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one of the things that's been really helpful for me is to, it's almost like a mental discipline, although I hate to use the word discipline, is to not indulge in second guessing what's already done. So I'll bet you there are a lot of people you were mentioning at the top of the show that there was this all the election stuff happening. I bet you there are a lot of people kicking themselves about how they voted, whether they voted, and it's not relevant. It's done. And for some people that's really hard because they want to go back and rehash their childhood or they rehash won't things. Fix the past. And you can't fix the past. But aren't you dealing with a mechanism? How do you stop that mechanism from working? We start with small things. So for me, it was easiest if I started with things like breakfast, you know, or you go to eat a, it. You go, <laughs> That's you go what to, I do. You go to, to a restaurant. Just start the day and boom. boom. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, like it used to be very torturous for me. You know, simple things like you go to a restaurant, you order something, I order something, she orders something, and then it's like, oh. He Maybe I should have ordered the other thing. Right. And to not continue that conversation, you have it and you just let it go. And if you find yourself back picking on the could have, should have, would have. So the mechanism that does that, you're kind of short-circuiting it. Well, and you're bringing it like, not letting it run. In other words, like if you think about like somebody who commits suicide, they have to have a lot of thoughts in a row to do it. No one thinks, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? You have to okay. have. Okay, so, so here's the thing. Now, you have thoughts. Thoughts happen to us. You know, you have a thought, it goes by. So let's say there's a window of your mind, which is here. You have a thought, it comes by, it comes by the window of your mind. And then you have another thought, and another thought. And every once in a while, a thought comes by, and you get lost in the thought, and then you become the thought. That's when people fall asleep at the wheel. They follow a thought, and they're gone. Well, life's that way. You know, you have thought. Thoughts happen. We think we have more control over our lives than we do. And actually, we don't. Until we let go of trying to control the way it turns out. Because you see, in this moment of now, could you be standing up? Could I be standing up? In mm -hmm. this very moment of now. No, because I'm sitting down. That's right. If I took a picture of you right now with a camera, I have an imaginary camera, you yeah, know, it's no, like the imaginary digital rabbit. Is gone. Digital. Yeah. Incredible, so right? I, yeah, right. right. So it's I got gotcha. you. Now, in that moment, could you be any different than you were when the shutter? open and closed. Right. No. No. So, wait a second. Then, a moment before that, could you have been any different than you were? No, I was what I was. You was right. what I was. And the moment before that, could you have been anything different? No, a lot of people would have wished so. That's but right, but it didn't happen. <laughs> if you couldn't be any different than you are right now, in this moment of now, or in this moment of now, then you could never have been different. And that's actually scientific. It's inductive proof. That means all the things that you work on about yourself from the past, all the things you congratulate yourself for or you kick on yourself for, it, it's over. It They're could not totally have been any irrelevant. different. They're irrelevant. You can't do anything about the past. Now let me ask you another question. Can you do anything about the future right now? Too late. Now and by. Can you change yourself right now? You can only be the way you are in this moment. The idea of a past or a future is all a mental fabrication. You have no idea in this moment whether that has anything to do with your life. Now, that's very freeing because if your so life... You, you say just the, the shining the light on that particular aspect of it can stop the process where it happens. Absolutely, because you see, that is not relevant. What's relevant is what's right in front of you right now. In your life, in this moment, what's relevant is what's in front of you. Okay, so now you have an intention. Would you, how would you describe, you You have plans and intention uh, to we'll go to- get to, to Costa Rica tomorrow. Right, how do you, how do you look at that? Well, I look at it that we're gonna have to get up at 5.30 in the <laughs> morning. No, that's the thought, I mean, if, if 
I mean, that's what you think now, right? But I mean, no, that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, no, not if you got a call that Costa Rica's on fire or that that's you know we're, we're bombing Costa Rica. But that, because but we, that hasn't because we happened. We can't figure out who's president. That we got to bomb somebody to get but the president. But when you're over. making plans, you do to the best of your ability given the so information you have. So it's an intention to do something. You have information in right? this it's moment. Right, it's an intention. You you intend to get up at five. I mean, well, you no, intend I'm to leave the to. studio. I'm going to. You mean if, if like this but light fell? Th that like, could. Actually, that light, that okay. light it, yes, that light could fall. Right. But so I'm, you don't know that either. But You're I'm not going to worry about that either. No, but you also it, don't have to worry about getting up at 5 in the morning. We don't. Right. I, I, you don't, I shut the alarm before I left the hotel room. Really? I really did. It's done. And, it's and done. When and, did you When did you leave? Maybe it would be rigged still. No, 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 no. I, I left. Uh, you got it uh, after uh, five. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you knew I that one. Yes, I, yeah, it's, it's handled. <laughs> right. Believe me. Okay, See, now your alarm is 100%. No. <laughs> no, of course right. not. Okay, so you don't know. I don't know if I have right. anything. Right. What I do know about with absolute certainty is this moment. That right. I know about. I know this moment. That's all I know, actually. Now, I infer possible futures. Like tomorrow morning, we are no, yeah, going to get yeah, on right, a plane no, and go to Costa Rica. I mean, we have an intention to and, be at and Caro's restaurant at you know in a couple of you know well, an hour. Maybe, maybe right. the people from and the it may audience. Not but if we go us. over there, right? And hopefully, a lot and of people. And we go over there, and, and it's closed down. Yeah, then we have to think of something else. So we yeah. eat in the van, or you know, That's or right. everybody goes their separate ways, or <laughs> you know, whatever. Yes, but yeah, the, but yeah. our intention is to do that, or our plan is to do that. Yes, but but you see, that's the difference between plans and goals. A goal is something you set out in front of you as where you want to be by a certain time in your life, for instance. And that's a setup for a for lot failure. of failure. Right. Yeah, a lot of And if you make it, it's neutral. And if you make it, it's you neutral discover. Neutral if you lose. If you don't make it, then but you're But it's not neutral it's if people are actually doing it as a goal. Because most no, people. No, the whole process, you're not enjoying the. Exactly. The, but the, the presupposition in a lot of people's goals is that when they get that thing or achieve that yeah, thing. happiness will be part of it. Right, more satisfaction. And what we've discovered is that how you are now is where you're satisfied. Satisfaction happens in this moment, not by acquiring. No, all the spiritual paths are, in essence, to how to you know stop the world, be in the moment, be here now. I mean, yes. you know, throughout history, that yes. and, all, and there were zillions of tools. I mean, that's when I was talking that, at the open. That's the thing, you see, because we've tried the zillions of tools. Yeah, but it took you to try the zillions of tools. Uh, yes, yes, but, but you luckily, don't have to do people that have now. been meeting us, and yes. so they don't have to. People we were speaking with a woman on the phone tonight, right before we got here, who hadn't tried any paths of any kind before she happened to meet us. Her accountant had her there and she was fighting with her husband for the whole uh, session. He said, you have to meet these people, you need it. <laughs> so she came and uh, it was like over a very short period of time, something very quickly shifted. And that's one of the things I find very exciting is that people don't have to take the long path that we did because it's we did do it. It's a different time now, anyway. It is. Right. It's a different, it's a different time, time and that's why, you know, right. we different had a guy, energy, yeah. we had a guy, we met him this weekend actually because he came and did a workshop in New York. We did an intuition week sh a workshop this weekend in New York. And he, he's from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He, he found our book in a bookstore and he read it and he then bought our audio tapes. <clears throat> He's tripled his reading sp speed and is now getting A's in college. And this is a man in his 50s. Uh, it, it, it was shocking because he said he now just read when he read and he didn't have to, he was not always thinking about other things. It got him into the moment and it's transformed his life. You know, like when you're reading a paragraph and then you realize that you have no idea what well, you just driving. read. You drove 75 miles and, and you, you don't, don't know where, where the, hell, <laughs> the hell happens. You know? Well, I think people are really lucky now. They have tools and there is books like Working on Yourself Doesn't Work, our book, because I think it used to be people had to have the fortune to run across people that were a fit with them, that resonated with them, and now you have books, you have the internet, you have shows like yours where people can be uh, introduced to ideas that otherwise they wouldn't have. They're, they're, they're just not possibilities. Yeah, they'd only be in the mystery see, see, schools see, up in the mountains. Right, right. Well, there used to be mystery schools up in the mountains, but it's easy to get enlightened in the mountains. It's not so easy in the marketplace, you know, in the cities. It's not so easy in the mountains either. I know. <laughs> That's true. If I might we say. know we did that. We tried that. We tried that. Right. Right. We did try that. The whole, it's not, the, I mean, on this whole planet, it's, it, it hasn't been that easy. Now, whether it's starting to get easier, it's just, it, I mean, there's a lot of carrying the weight I, of a physical I, I'll tell form you, and all that. 
See? Yep. You know, when we realize it's not that easy, then we can have compassion. Because if we think it's easy, in a sense, it's easy and it's not easy. Well, well look around, no, no, it's no. not that Here's easy. Here's the thing. I mean, what attachments do we have? I mean, if somebody said to you, now, do you live in every moment? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I actually And what do. could, what, what, see, I think that. Practice. My, what could, what could get you out of the moment? Well, Disagreeing with something? There you go. When, well, when, would there be, I mean, could there be any physical ailment? Could there be any no, harm I mean, to I, those you love? I mean, yeah, if all of a sudden but, you went to Caro's and she never showed up there. I'd be upset. <laughs> Probably. I'd, I'd be very, me. very upset. Which, but, and you'd be in the moment of upset. And, and I'd be in that physical upset in the moment with the physical upset. See, look, people think that when you become enlightened, nothing phases you anymore. And that You're, there's and, no pain. And no pain, and there's no angst, and there's no uh, sickness. You know, you ascend. <laughs> it, it doesn't well, work that is, way. But you don't think it works that way at all? When, when Which you, way? <laughs> <laughs> Which way is that way? Well, I mean, that, that you wouldn't have as much angst, that you wouldn't have as uh, much stress, well, that you wouldn't thing. have... The, tr I the mean, truth of the matter is... joy more. The truth of the matter is that when you get into the moment and learn to live there, there is much less angst, there's very little frustration, there is a serenity, there is a, a feeling or a sense of well-being that pervades the fiber right, of I your life. And yeah. pain comes from resisting what is. And so obviously, if something were to happen to one or the other of us, there'd likely be some resistance and there'd likely be pain associated with it. But we have managed to in a lot of situations that in the past really threw us for months or years. Yeah, right, it's, it, the time it's frame is, So yeah, basically, right. people the come... The momentum's changing. They yeah. come to seminars with us, or they read our book, or they do things, and, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners and uh, the people who watch your show know they've had those moments. And then the question is, if you can get the moments closer. And so a lot yeah, of... run them together. Yeah. Here's the other <laughs> right, thing. Yeah. You've got to give up the story of your life. Because oh, people, yes, yes it's true. people have a story about why they are the way they are. And if you believe that story to be true, then you can't discover what's possible for yourself. Yes, uh, Don Juan used to talk, I don't know if you're familiar with the Don Juan books, Carlos Castaneda, mm -hmm. Erasing Personal History. You know, it's, it's easy to say, but I, I just say if you let... Very, for me. No, no, not, you know, <laughs> no, a lot of things easy are to, to say, say, but it's not that easy to do. That's right, it's, very, it's not easy to do, but okay. with transformation, it can happen where you take your attention off yourself and you start putting your attention out into your world and you become more appropriate to the things that need taken care of around you rather than your personal story about why your life is the way it is. It's not really from our perspective about erasing your personal history. It's yeah. more about including it so that, it, as Shai was saying, as you get more engaged in what you're doing, that kind of fades into the background so it's not really relevant and it's still there you can draw upon it at any time it's like a jukebox you know it's filled with these records and you can press when the circumstance press a7 there's like oh there's that mm -hmm. upset or there's a reminder of that but y when you're present you don't have to operate through having all those buttons records pushed, all pushed the time. and right. you know then but you go off on the record life is pushing your buttons all the time well you right. see a lot of of what keeps people from having great lives is their incompletions with their parents. Because if, if you're at war with one or the other of your parents, then you're, you're not living your life. You're living you're, not their life. That's right. You're and then any man is like dad and any woman is like mom. And, and pretty then soon, there's a whole world full of people you can be upset with. And, and, <laughs> and It's a dream come true. That's right. <laughs> You can be upset with just so many people. Right. And, <laughs> and upsets are such convenient things, right. too, because they keep you, you never, And you never have to look at yourself. Well, actually, well. upsets are convenient because they keep you from having to go into confronting situations of a creative nature. So we used to see that when we were writing when articles. When we had to write an article, we used to fight. It was really? like, that was, oh, that it was, was like, and then we started to recognize that the upset saved us from the unknown. And then we didn't have to do it anymore. That you know, was really when you, when you become aware of an upset, you can discover how not to touch it. You know, like uh, I got a disturbing uh, email today, and I could either indulge myself in the disturbance of the email, or notice that it's disturbing, and then get on with my life. 
Right. You have a choice. You don't have to be stuck in those upsets once you learn that you don't have to be. Right. But you see, what most people promote, the, the common idea, common sense idea is that upsets are a thing you just have to live with. You know, you see it coming and it's too late. Then you have to just weather it. And in many respects, that's true. It's kind of like with the computer when you, you're, you're, you're <laughs> drawing the mouse down that, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, the thing. The, 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 the cursor the going cur down the menu. And menu. You, you know, you pull down the menu and you miss and you go to the wrong application and you hit restart instead of close. And you have well, to wait for the, the whole, whole thing, thing to come. Right. Well, well, that's the way it is with upsets. Frequently, somebody gets you, your mechanism gets triggered, and the upset starts, and you have to weather it out. But with transformation, just the seeing of it is enough for it to stop. Just seeing it, shining light see, on that. See, so, in other words, you're almost like developing a lot of spiritual paths is like the observer. So that's you're observing right. yourself being but upset. Now, see, here's the thing. There are three states. There's doing, being, and having. Well, in the being state, just seeing something is enough to facilitate the completion of it. You don't have to do anything. Say that again. Just seeing it. You said it before about shining a light. Right. Awareness, a non-judgmental seeing is like shining a light on your life. And when you see what you're doing, it's as if in this studio we turned out all the lights. I know the cameras wouldn't work too well. And it would we, be a little harder, and, but they hear we, these and, voices. And, and, <laughs> and, and you tried walking across the room, you'd stumble over the furniture of the chairs, over the, the props. And the right. people. And the people and the <laughs> cameras. But if you turn a light on, you don't have to. Well, it's the same way with awareness. When you see your mechanical behaviors, if you don't beat on yourself for having them, they lose their power over your life and you start getting control over your life. And then you don't step into those places that are like quicksand and pull you down. You have the freedom to not have to do it. And, and you've been traveling around with the book and with book signings and workshops and lectures and you see people coming and really being like exploded into that experience. Yes, but it takes maintenance afterwards. You know, it's, it's where people fall into themselves, they relax into themselves, and then it depends on what people are interested in, because there's definitely a current in life that says, hey, you know, go right, back to sleep. Right, the momentum, I mean, so it's they going the other way. Right, so they, they're in your workshop for three days, they have an experience, they know, something in them knows it's right. But then they go back to their lives, their family, their wives, their money, their jobs, you know, their religion, you know, all the, all the ideas, all the history. Yes. And then, so there are, however you describe them, tools or ways of being. I mean, they can't hook, everybody can't hook themselves to you guys and just, you know. Well, there's one thing we've discovered that's been really helpful for a lot of people, and that's three principles of transformation. And when you recognize them, things get easier. And the first is a uh, law of physics, and that's what you resist persists and grows stronger. Anything that you resist persists and grows stronger. And then the second principle is no two things can occupy the same space at the same time. So, like, you can't be standing when you're sitting. And the third principle is that anything you allow to be exactly the way it is, will, it will dissolve itself, clear up and disappear. It will complete itself in the moment of the seeing of it. So, you know, anything that you resist persists, and, and you can't be any different than you are. So in each moment, you can only be the way you are. Now, if you can just see the way you are, rather than judge the way you are, your life will start to unfold naturally without any work, without any stress, without any struggle. So if you see yourself doing something that you don't really appreciate and you resist that, you actually are energizing the thing that you wish you would let go of. Right, it's like adding fuel to a fire when you beat on yourself for not being the way you think you ought to be. But if you do something that you do over and over and you don't particularly like, and you see it, you say, oh look, I did that again, and you just get on with your life, it's almost over. How can we do the same stupid things over and over again? Because we say they're stupid, you see. Saying they're minor stupid judgment. is a minor judgment. <laughs> well, you used, I mean, you used a, a, an expression like that. What you didn't I use say? stupid. You said something that we didn't like. So we were judging it, yes? Yes. 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 But, so, but, yeah, your, your definition, your, your example, when you say it's stupid, that's a good example. That's what we that's do in what our we heads. That's what we call it, stupid. You no, know, I was dim. just following through with you. So how, how does that work? If you see you it, notice yourself saying that was stupid. That was stupid, and you don't judge yourself for judging yourself. And if you judge yourself for judging yourself, then you don't just judge don't judge that. Judging yourself. Yeah, no, just I start somewhere. No, I mean it's 
Uh, it's tricky business. I mean, we could talk it about does. instant transformation, but I mean, on Earth here in the physical forum, I mean, we have to realize that it's not that easy, and then we could have true compassion for right. others. Now, it's not wait that easy. a second. You can. It can be that easy, and you can have true compassion for others. It isn't as difficult as people have said, especially these days. Look, 30 years ago, the idea of an Internet was impossible. It just didn't exist. No. There was no even concept of it then. Well, right now, getting emails, having an Internet, it's just everybody's got it. Well, the idea of waking up, of having clarity, of living your life moment to moment, 30, 40 years ago was a difficult, arduous task because we went through it that way because we went with the best that there was. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't any easy path. And we did a lot of hard work. Now, you don't have to work hard. There are some very simple, easy things that you can do. It gets paradoxical again. Right. And ways of being which you can fall into, discover, that will transform your life in an instant it does not take hard work. And when you become more enlightened, you become more compassionate for the pain people are in and for what they have to go through. Because, you know, you have to give it up in order to get enlightened. You know, you have to give up the story of your life, which is not easy for most of us because we want to hold on to those good, bad stories. You know, they're interesting. Yeah, get you on Oprah. Yeah, if you had a really horrible childhood, right. well, that's pretty good. Right. But if you had really a really horrible, you even get on Jerry Springer. That's like, right. You how go. lucky you are. Yeah, yeah, but it's you know you're 15 <laughs> minutes. Knock on people. Right. right. <laughs> you know, I think uh, we coming to the end of the show. We are. Isn't it amazing? So, uh, if anybody wants any information on uh, Ariel or Shia or Kate, where she's playing, uh, where their where their workshops are, of their book. Please call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. There's just a chance for us all. I mean, Ariel and Shia have a way. It's, it's a beautiful way. And we can be transformed instantaneously into a new and greater experience. And that's really what, you know, the show's about. And that's what, you know, everything's here to do. So, again, good night. God bless you. Thanks for coming. And thanks for all your love. Good night.